Mark from Uber Rock. Welcome to Uber Rock Television. We're here at Hard Rock Hell in Fueli. Probably pronounced it wrong as usual. Um, and uh, delighted to say we've been joined by Glenn and Mark from Crowsaw. Hi. Great to see you. Tell us a wee bit about the band for those who don't know anything about you. Oh. Uh, there's actually three of you, so isn't it? It's a three piece, yeah. Unfortunately, Rob can't make it up until tomorrow. Um, oh, sorry, late, late tonight, late tonight, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Due to other commitments, like well, life singers, they don't do any work. No, no. <laughs> let, let us do it. Let us do all the. Hey, you hug all the, lug all the equipment up. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So uh, yeah, it's a it's a three piece. Um, we've worked together in one way, shape or form for twenty plus years. Yeah. But this is well, two years now where it's just been the three of us, pretty much solid, and um, really enjoying ourselves. <laughs> How would you describe your style of music? Oh. Getting heavier. <laughs> it's, yeah. When we started out with what we're doing now, it started out with more of a blues tinge to it. Um, in, in fact, we played in this very venue two and a half years ago at the uh, opened the the blues festival for HRH back in March 14. But yeah, it's it's evolved. Very slight change in the lineup. Um, Mark replaced Alvin, the first drummer Alvin. and um, brought a more sort of heavier. Well, they, melodic sort of I've got a little pro project studio and they came to me to record the first album. Well, I say first, the Smoke and Feathers album. Mm. And um, things weren't working out with Elvis, so Rob gave me a call and said, Jim, do you want to blow off the dust off your sticks? Because I had played for years. I said, come and join me. So I like, yeah, they're all right, why not? And it's just gone from there, isn't it? But mm. I've got a slightly more heavier influence on it's not really heavy, but it is slightly in Rob, because I used to play with Rob and Glyn, as what Glyn said, you know, going back 25 years ago, we were in bands, and uh, we just got back to our roots. So, so there's a, still a little bluesy tinge on a couple of the mm. tracks in there, but it's getting heavier. Um, it's quite it's quite riffy, it's drop, drop B on some of them. Um, it's melodic, I'd say. Um, and I've started on the... When I've been producing stuff and recording it, I, I've added a few little bits of synths and stuff of various things and just add a bit of colour in the background. It's not overkill because it's a three piece, it just gives it a bit more depth. Mm. Um, so I do work with a clip track when we're playing and I do have backing tracks, but it's not 24 tracks. <laughs> um, it's just oh, who are we talking about there? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a couple of bits in the background just to add a little fill, but that's it. The rest we do live, isn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, that's kind of so the you're way. back at Hard Rock Hell? Back yes. Yeah. Ele ele elevated to the main event. Well, the Blues yeah, Festival when it started was sort of like a wee bolt tone, wasn't it? Yeah, it, I think it was a little a little tester, and it was down here a little bit out of the way from the the rest of the venue. Um, but it was a nice atmosphere down here. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice to, to move up the hill <laughs> over the railway tracks. We we're now on the right side of the tracks, as it were. And um, Papa yeah, John's really, is right there. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, the, we got a pizza parlour. We're in the venue. The <laughs> I know. I love it. You can stand there eating a pizza with a beer, watching bands. Oh, genius this place. Got it all. And in the main arena, you've got the chippy and the Burger King. Yeah. Oh, uh, it is. It's great. I mean, I think it's fantastic. They've packed it out with bands. My only, my only niggle with it is the way they're crossing over a bit. To be fair, there's a, it's like when we start. There's a band. You know, we're friends with Scam, they're on. But at the end of their set's lapping over the first 15 of ours. And there's, we've had lots of friends and, and people that support us today. Wow, this is a nightmare, we want to see you back. <laughs> well, I'm gutted because I wanted to see Scam. Uh, yeah, poor, well, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's inevitable at festivals. It's going to be It's going to happen. It's going to happen. In fairness to the, the guys at HRH, I mean, they want to give you your money's worth. And, and they it, certainly they have do. gone mm. to hang, yeah. It's a back to back. Brilliant. I mean, what, last night, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm really looking forward to the rest of the weekend. It's going to be good. So, after this, what's what's next for Crusoe? New material. Yeah. We've um, we recorded the first album back. To, to over two years ago now, isn't it? Yeah. Well, pushing three years ago. We did, then we moved on in style with, when Mark joined us and we started, did an EP, which is which has fared quite well. And quite recently, we sort of consolidated the, that earlier bluesy stuff with the newer, sort of heavier melodic stuff into a live album, which we recorded down in uh, the Dolls House in Abertillery in South Wales. So we've nailed the material we've had for the last sort of two to three years, we've 
we feel we've completely nailed it and it's time now to really bring something yeah, we new to, to freshen it up. We've got the live album we put out as a bonus track on the end and that we, we had a small window where we started writing and we got one of the tracks down. It's called Release and it's a bonus track hidden on the end of the album which not many people are because they haven't really pushed the live album. No. Um, but that's a taste of kind of where it's going really. Um, I can't put my finger on it, but I think I'm sure somebody with the expertise could s slot it somewhere. I think that's uh, yeah. It, it's not it's not screamy, but it, it's it's quite it's heavy driving riffs, as it says, and, and uh, yeah, it's just trying to get, get a nice groove behind it. I don't forget people bouncing. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Really? The new album on the right. I reckon, yeah. yes, 2017. Definitely. Lots yeah. of bits of material on the go, so I think we've got a few that are almost. Which really be a lot of bands recently are going down the route of sort of just producing EPs rather than yeah. going for the albums. Mm. Is that a, a road use so we can maybe be more attempted to keep, to keep well, the output regular? Well, we did, like I said, we did the album, then the EP, then the live one. But some one thing we were discussing today is really want to put something on vinyl. Um, that to me. Because you know, at the end of the day, what we do is for enjoyment. Mm -hmm. We are not full professional out there, per, constantly playing. In fact, who is nowadays mm -hmm. that you can count on, on? You know, you don't need to take your shoes and socks off to count the amount of bands that are able to actually do this as a, as a full-time uh, thing. So we're there for the enjoyment of it. So as long as we can do something a little bit fresh each time and keep ourselves interested. Then we'll just see what comes. We've got the advantage of having, I mean, Mark calls it a little project studio. You've recorded some pretty professional I, I, yeah, artists. I mean, I, I've recorded 10 years after and stuff, though, and uh, I was playing with Joe, Joe Gooch, who was with 10 years after. He's now just doing 107 split with Leo. I say just, they're having a great time with Leo Lyons from 10 years after because they split up. And I've recently had Rick back doing the drums for the new album coming out with Mark. Um, um, yeah, so that's all good. It's, it's, it's not, it's not, I haven't got millions of quiz of equipment, I've just got ears and I, I love what I do and that's what it's all about. I mean, I've heard some records put out lately by some other bands and friends of ours and I've gone to these big, bigger studios with so-called top producers from yesteryear and uh, they're just spewing out noise, it's, it's not good really, it's not representing their music. I mean, the last, to some friends of ours we know, they live, they're great, the energy, and it's really good. Listen to it on album, I haven't captured any of that. It's just it's like, whoa, I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> and it's so important you get the right producer, and it doesn't matter if it's a shed or slightly bigger than a shed, if they're keen to make it make a difference and make try and capture your sound, that's what it's all about. Right? Yeah, that's what we, we, we talk to a lot of bands back home, and they only work with certain producers because they say the producers are fit fourth or fifth or sixth yeah, member of the band, band really, and if they don't have the ear for what the band are trying to do, I mean, should also push the band as well. Yeah. Like you say, Mark's brought in a new, the new dimension to the sound yeah. taking using the And like, as you say, the, a, a good producer is, is a member of the band. I mean, we literally, our producer is a member of the band. <laughs> and it, it, it's ideal. Um, we're very, very lucky in that respect. We can experiment. We can try things out. We can record them at a professional level. So we can come back to it and have a listening. So when we're developing what we're, what we're doing next, it's not guesswork. Mm. And it's um, not costing you a fortune in the process? It, no, it's not. It, it helps with the production, which is why every, you, you can afford to basically do the whole thing yourself nowadays. All I want to do is, the next stage, whatever we do, I'd just love to put something out on vinyl just to say that we did. <laughs> well, we look forward to that. Guys, Thank thanks you. for your time. Pleasure um, we're looking forward to catching your set tomorrow. Thanks, yeah. thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye. Over now.